Now, if you watch HGTV or DIY Network, you see a lot of the typical subfloors where they use the two by two panels, typically dry core. Now, if you're Brian Baumler or Mike Holmes or Scott McGilvery and you're sponsored by these guys, then yeah, it's great. But if you're like me or you watching this and you have to buy it, $7 a panel, it's not worth it. So I'm gonna show you how you can achieve the same thing for a fraction of the cost. Let's go. Great thing about having a subfloor is you never want to have wood directly on concrete and also you want your floor to be able to breathe. So this is a poly product, it's not going to mold. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your concrete floor is clean and free of any organic materials because organic materials will mold. So make sure that you clean everything, vacuum it, and then most basement floors aren't level. So if you do not put, put the landscaping fabric down, you'll get a, a hollow sound. I'll show you what that sounds like right now. Now, I was the guinea pig, and I tried installing a portion of this floor without any of the cloth underneath, and you can hear it here. Now, as far as the moisture barrier product that you're gonna use for your subfloor, there's many different brands. There's DMX. I, I like using the Delta FL. You get the best bang for your buck. DMX is a good product. It has a foam underlayment that's built in as well to prevent that hollow sound. But you can achieve the same thing by putting the landscape fabric down for a lot cheaper. If you do decide to go with Delta FL, it comes with tape, but that's all they give you. It's not very much. So you could also use tuck tape. It's the exact same thing. And you just place this over all the seams. That way you could create a vapor barrier. And once you have this down and your 5 8 OSB subfloor, you create a difference of seven degrees between your concrete floor and your main floor, which is very nice for a basement, so it keeps it nice and warm. So all you have to do is butt up your joints, do not overlap them, and then you just place the tuck tape over top. Try to keep them nice and tight. Now the manufacturer recommends using low expansion spray foam on the perimeter. I personally wouldn't use that because no matter what, even if they say it's low expanding, that stuff gets everywhere and it creates a huge mess. So I just use tuck tape, fold it, and then place that in the corners. That way you have a vapor seal. So just place it like that, and then fold it up against your base plate. Now in this basement, I used spray foam on all the exterior walls. So I didn't have a uh, poly, six mil poly, but if you're using um, bad insulation with six mil poly, then you can just leave a little bit extra and then tuck tape along that seam and you'll get the same result. Make sure when you're rolling this out that you put the cup side up and dimple side down. When you're cutting around corners, it's very easy. You can either use scissors or an X-Acto knife. Now that our Delta membrane is installed, we can install our OSB plywood. Now I'm using Tapcons. They're inch and three quarters with a Phillips head and they're flat on the top to fasten the OSB to the ground. And I put eight in each four by eight sheet. So one in each corner. One right here in the center, two there on the four foot line, one here again in the center, and then one on each corner again. Now in this one I actually had to put an extra one in here, and it was just because of the way I had the boards stored. They had a bit of a concave to them, and uh, the ends weren't lining up. That's why I put one extra one in there. You, you might find in certain areas you'll have to do that as well. Now it's important when you're installing this, when you're putting in your second row, not to have any of the butt joints line up. So in this section, there's a butt joint there. I made sure that my very first piece that I put in at the end wasn't a full length. That way, my butt joints are staggered. The reason why you do this is just for the structural integrity. If all your butt joints are lined up, it's not as strong. It's kind of like building a brick wall. So I'll show you how to put this in. It's very easy. It's hung in groove. Put it on an angle. Slide in like that. You can just use your foot and 
kick it in the face. Don't kick it in the face. If you don't want to use the kicking caveman approach, you can use just a tapping block, a piece of two by four, and a hammer. You just want to tap it so that your edges are flush. The tap concept comes with a drill bit. It's a quarter inch drill bit. It's designed for drilling through concrete. So make sure the drill that you're using is on the hammer setting. I'm using 100% silicone to fill in all the screw holes. The reason why you do this is it just helps with the screw adhering and also keeps everything vapor tight. And I'm using a nut driver for this or an impact gun and I find it works better than a drill. There's less chance of over torquing it and stripping it as it goes in. And just feather the trigger as you go. That way you can avoid stripping it. excess and that's it and if you do strip one then all you have to do is take it out redrill a hole right beside it and just do the same procedure Now as far as the, what's this stuff called? When you're installing this, make sure that you put the cup side up and dimple side down. That's right, right? Is it? Cup side. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, and to stay connected, subscribe to my channel, and you can also follow me on Instagram.